Well, hello retro computing enthusiasts. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And it's that time again. It is retro computing find of the week. And what have we got up on the workbench today? Well, we have an Epson HX20 portable computer. Often called the first true laptop computer. Although, you know, other people would probably argue that point. But hey, it's a nice little computer. I got this a while back in a scrap pickup that I did over on my main channel. I'll put a link to that scrap pickup video in the upper right, and you can check that out if you're at all interested. This came from a company. They used it to run a CNC lathe. In fact, it says up here, there's a sticker on it, it says CNC1098. I think that was the name of the program that they ran to, ran the, to run the lathe. Um, it has a micro cassette tape deck built into it here. And um, from what I understand, I was told here by the people I got this from, they would put the micro cassette in and they would load a basic program in. And this thing would run the CNC lathe. In fact, this thing had been running a CNC lathe for about 40 years before they finally retired the whole system, the lathe and everything. And I wound up getting the computer. So this is kind of like the little computer that could. I mean, it, it just, you know, it kept running that lathe forever. Um, apparently it had had its internal battery replaced a couple of times over the years because, well, NICAD battery packs go bad. So apparently it had a good NICAD battery pack in it, but it did not come with a charger. So I haven't done anything with this until I got a charger for it and could charge it up and see if it actually works. So uh, I could not get the original charger, but um, I found a six volt wall wart charger here that had the correct barrel connector on it to plug into this. Um, I had to reverse the polarity, uh, basically cut the wire and uh, wire it back up backwards because this was um, center negative here on the Epson and this thing is center positive. But hey, it works. It charged up and it worked great. Oh, by the way, we are sharing the workbench here with my Nabu computer, but since the Epson is so small, I think they can share it quite nicely. I will put a link in the upper right to my Nabu computer playlist. I have 13, I think, videos now on the Nabu. So you can check that out if you like. Nabu's a neat little computer. But let's get back to the Epson. All right. So the big question is, does it still work? Well, let's turn it on now that I've charged up the battery. Beep, beep. And I hope that's showing up on the screen. Let me take a close-up look. Yeah, we've got monitor and basic for our two choices. Now, I haven't played around with the monitor too much. I need to read up on it and see what functions are available. But just going to basic, well, uh, you get Microsoft Basic. Now, you only have a four-line screen, which is kind of limiting, but you can write a simple program. And then when we run it, there we are. It's working. So yes, it works. So this is a rugged little computer to have been running that lathe in an industrial environment for about 40 years. So that's great. Um, break, yeah, break stops the program. List, there's the program. So, um, this uses CMOS battery-backed RAM in it. And I'll show you the back of this thing in a little bit. We'll take a look at the innards. But, so if we turn this off, our program doesn't go away as long as the internal battery doesn't run down. So we can turn it back on later. We can do basic again. We'll do list. 
And there's our program still there. They told me they only had to reload the program in this from the tape every once in a great while. If something got screwed up in the program or the battery would go dead or, you know, something would happen. They would have an extended shutdown and the battery would run down in this thing and they would have to reload the program. But usually they said they would come in in the morning, turn it on, fire up the lathe and get it back to work. So let's take a close up look at uh, this computer, uh, including a peek at the innards and uh, see what's going on with it. So the computer has a really nice keyboard. It has a really nice feel to it. Um, I think the limiting factor on this would have been the four line display up there, which not only is it only four lines, it's not very wide. So you, you know, if you were going to sit here and type like a, a big letter or, or something, you know, if you wanted to sit on a desert island and, and type your great American novel, I think it would have been very difficult on this thing. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it is what it is for its age. Um, it has a built-in uh, printer. Now, I have not figured out how to make the printer work yet. And I, there may be a problem with it because the paper feed doesn't seem, to, doesn't seem to feed. So I don't know if there's something wrong with the rollers or it just needs cleaning or if there's, you know, an actual problem in there. Um, and like I said, I haven't figured out actually how to send output to the printer yet. I'm sure there's a way to do that, but I just have to read through the manuals. Um, it's, it's not very heavy. Not very heavy at all. So that would have been nice for portable use. I'm thinking like under four pounds, maybe. So not too heavy at all. Um, already talked about the, uh, the micro cassette drive it's got in it so it can uh, store and retrieve programs that way. Um, let's look at all the uh, ports and controls on it. Uh, so over here we've got, you know, the main power switch over here. That view angle is an adjustment for the LCD screen. So basically, you know, whatever angle you're viewing it at, you can turn that knob to make it more readable. Um, we've got up here at the top, that's the eject button for the cassette. And then we have um, controls for a full-size um, cassette deck, like uh, a lot of computers used in the day, mic, earphone, remote. Um, an input for a barcode scanner. That's kind of interesting. That would have been very useful back in the day. Reset button right there. Now, if we look at this side of it, uh, cartridge out. And what this does, this will actually, you can actually take the whole cassette deck out. And I guess you can put other accessories in, but I don't have any other accessories. And I'm not sure whether the accessories were available, but um, the whole, the whole um, cassette deck can be removed and other stuff can be slid in its place. Um, there's the power input right there, and next to it is RS-232C port on a DIN plug connector and a serial port on, on a DIN plug connector. The serial port probably would have been, you know, RS-232C and serial, they sound like they're the same thing, but the serial would probably have been dedicated to a modem, I would imagine. So that's usually the way it was back in the day. So on this side over here, we have a dual inline connector there, um, 40 pins on it, and this brings out some bus signals from the computer. Now this is how they interface the computer to the lathe this used to run. Uh, a, a fat ribbon cable went from this into a control box on the lathe, and inside the control box there were some 6820 um, PIA chips. A couple of them and those ran off to and the ports on those ran off to run the various functions on the lathe so this is how they interfaced it to the lathe okay let's look at the back um let's see here there's the plate on it so it's got nikad it's got a nikad battery pack in it somewhere but if we take this lid here off, this doesn't give us access to the batteries. This gives us access to the system RAM. So each of these chips is 2K by 8. 
static RAM, CMOS static RAM. Um, and it looks like it, it, it comes with um, 8K standard, and it looks like another 8K has been added in the sockets. And there's an empty socket over here. I assume that is for an extra ROM to give this thing extra capabilities. I am not 100% certain, but that's really what I assume it would be for. Okay, got a little bit of an EMI shield here. The battery's in here somewhere. But it seems to be working. It's holding a charge, so I'm not going to do too much with it. Um, don't we don't really see the we don't really see the processor in here, but this thing uses actually two CPUs. They are Hitachi 6301s, which are basically, I guess, variants of the 6809. CPU, which was used in uh, computers like the uh, TRS-80 color computer and some others. Actually, the 6809 and variants on it had really made great inroads into industrial control computers, and you find them in a lot of industrial control computers. So I'm not too surprised that this thing wound up doing industrial control duty. But apparently it has two of those 6301 processors in it. One is actually used for processing in the user interface, and the other, I guess, is used for all the peripherals. So that's how that works. But uh, yeah, this is this is an interesting little computer. You know, I've kind of I've kind of wanted to get into the six eight zero nine architecture, and this is kind of one one way I can do it. So yeah, I'm very happy to have this computer. It's going to be a nice little addition to my collection. I need to clean it up a little bit, like I do all the retro computers I get. Um, get the stickers off of it. See if I can make the printer work. Um, I'm going to have to acquire some micro cassettes and see if I can save and reload programs from it. Um, but you know, this is this is a nice little computer. You know, I sell a lot of my um, retro computer finds after I clean them up. You know, pimp them out a little bit. But this one, I think I'm going to keep. I mean, it's 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 a nice little computer. Doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, it's definitely got this port on the side. I can use it for running stuff too, just like it was originally used. So, yeah, this is this is cool. This is a great find, and you know, I am just I'm I'm so lucky. A lot of this stuff I'm getting actually works without too much trouble. I mean, this thing works great, no trouble at all. Just you know, I just had to get a new power supply for it, charge up the battery, and hey, it works. So you know. That's a good lesson for you guys out there. If you're into retro computing and you want to you want to get a hold of some old hardware, I mean, look for people who are throwing it out, all right? A lot of times they're just throwing it out because it's old, they don't have a use for it, they've upgraded to something new, not necessarily because it's broken, okay? Most of the stuff I get either works when I fire it up or it just needs very, very minor repairs to get it going. So if you want to get into the whole retro computing thing, build up your collection of older computers. Just just look for the people who are throwing the stuff out. They're happy to get rid of it. Um, and um, like I said, a lot of the times it just works. I mean, the only problem with this is the paper feed isn't working. So I got to figure that out. Otherwise, this thing's in great condition. Could stand a little cleaning up. Got a little industrial dust and crud on it. But other than that, it's working good. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you found it a little bit of educational, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. There'll be another find of the week and other retro computing videos and electronic videos coming out soon. Check out my main channel, Omega Geek 64, where stuff that doesn't work and nobody wants gets rendered down for its gold and silver. That's pretty interesting. I think so anyway. So check that out if you get a chance. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.